Now let's look at the cross product. We've got two vectors here, a vector A and a vector B. So the vector A is 4, 1 and the vector B is minus 2, 3. We place the vectors tail to tail, so we've got the same point here for the beginning of the vectors. Now whenever we form the cross product, we produce another vector which is orthogonal to both of these vectors. So in effect we can think about this vector as coming out to us from the screen. So in effect we're ended up with a, a vector system which is in three dimensions. We've got the A and the B lie in one plane and the final vector for the cross product lies in the other plane. So we'll put in in this example here. Now this isn't the actual um, cross product of these two vectors, it's just a representation. So the cross product is going to be another vector. But remember this vector is actually in the three dimensions and it's coming out of the screen, say, towards us. Now we can also write it mathematically. So this is the mathematics for it here. Now, as I said before, I'm not going to go through proofs of these. If you're interested, I have another course called the Mathematics, a Graphical Approach, in which I go through the derivation of the cross product. So if you're interested, you can always look up that course. Now, in order to generate the cross product, we have the two vectors A and the vector B and the vector A cross B is the vector here in pink. So we're going to have the vector in three uh, dimensions. If we like, we could take the first one here as the x-axis, the second one here is the y, and the third one here is the z. So what we're doing is we're multiplying the scalar coefficients here by an orthogonal unit vector. So the unit vector in the x direction is i, and the y direction is j, and the z direction is k. And these just represent the directions of these vectors. So in order to generate the cross product, it's going to be a2b3 minus a3b2, and it's going to be a3b1 minus a1b3, a1b2 minus a2b1. Now again, we'll see this whenever we look at the determinant of a matrix, when we work through the uh, matrix library. Now, the other way of writing this A cross B is the length of A, the length of B, and the sine of the angle in between. So that's the length of A, length of B, and the sine of this angle in between them. So what's really happening is, as these two vectors were to um, open up or rotate away from one another, then the length of this would increase. So whenever both the vectors are pointing in the opposite directions, then the length of this would be a maximum. Whenever both the vectors are one on top of another, then the vector here would be a value of zero. Now this is very useful in physics. And if you were to look at, say, for example, uh, Maxwell's equations in electromagnetics, then the cross product is used uh, prevalent, prevalently throughout um, Maxwell's equations. But we're not going to get into any detail in the mathematics here. We just want to be able to produce this here as an algorithm. So we need to get access to the uh, components of vector A and the components of vector B. So vector A is going to be A1, B1 and uh, A1, uh, A2 and A3 and vector B is going to be B1, B2 and B3 and we need access to them within this uh, particular order. So let's go and we'll see how we're going to do this within the assembly language program. In the right hand side we have the calling function, in the left hand side we have the subroutine. The calling function has got two vectors, vector A which is defined as array underscore 1, vector B which is array underscore 2. 
we don't have the length because we only ever deal with vectors with three components whenever we're doing the cross product. So we know the length is always three. Now we want to save the final answer, which is going to be a vector with three components. And we're going to save that in cross. And you see I've used the ds command and it's set aside three memory locations. We push the array one, array two, and the cross onto the stack. And then we jump to the subroutine. Now we would go over to the subroutine, run through the subroutine, and it will generate the three values that we require, and it will save them in the memory location starting at cross. And that'll be the end of our program, and we'll go to the end, and that's it finished. So let's talk through the actual program here. So we do our housekeeping here, we save the values of the registers in the memory location so we can get access to them later. We pop the values off, we pop the return address, and then we're going to pop the cross, array 2, and then array 1. So it's cross, because in here, array 2, and then array 1. Now, we have to get access to these values, but we don't have access, need access to them in a simplified manner. So in the previous examples, we could just do a1 and then b1, a2, b2, but now we're having to access them in a different order. So what I can do is we can actually take a note of the actual memory locations for each of these. So for example, um, 2 is going to be an 8500, 1 is going to be 8501, and then 3 is 8502, and so on and so forth. Okay, so what we can do is we can take a note of the memory locations. So we've got the original memory locations which we pushed onto the stack and we've popped it back off. And then what we can do is we can um, save those memory locations in a memory location in the uh, RAM. And then we can increment register R2 and R3, and then we can save the next two memory locations and then the next two memory locations. So in effect, we're generating the A1B1, A2B2, and the A3B3 for the actual um, a vector. So now we're in the position that we've got access to the memory locations, we know what numbers they are for them, we can actually get through and generate the uh, three components of the vectors. So the first component is going to be the i, and then it's going to be the j, and then it's going to be the k. So the i component, we're going to first of all load the memory location into register R0, so once we get the memory location, we can actually get access to the actual value within the memory location by loading R0 into itself. And it will then go ahead and grab the actual content, which the first one would be a value of 2. Uh, and it would load that into the register. So we do the same for um, the other part of it. So in effect, we're, we're loading in A2, sorry, A2 and B3 first of all and we multiply them together. So at this line here, register R1 is going to have A2B3. And then we go through the same process for uh, the next lot, and it's going to have A3B2. And then we subtract one from another, and this is a subtraction. We get the first component here, and then we take that component and we save it into a memory location. We then go through the same process again, but this time we're going to pull out the a3b1 and the a1b3 and we do the subtraction and in this case as well we want to save it in the next memory location so the next memory location of cross so we have to add one on to the uh, register r4 which contains that memory location and we can store that value and we, we do the same thing for the k and the k we generate the a1b2 minus a2b1 so once we've gone through these three, we'll have the correct number stored in the cross um, vector. And after that, we can then go back and we can do the housekeeping. We'll take all of the values that are stored in memory for our registers and we'll put them back into the register. And then we'll go to the return address. So we jump back up to the return address here and the program ends. And that's the 
end of our uh, cross product. So let's load this example in and we'll see it working. I have gone ahead and I have loaded the subroutine into the ROM and I have loaded the program into the RAM. So let's run through this and we'll see if we get the correct answer. Now I've used the same values that we used in the code uh, that we seen just a second ago. I put the values into ChatGPT as well and asked it to generate the answer for the um, A cross B. So we should be able to get in and we'll uh, make a comparison. So that's it finished there. I'll stop this and we'll look and see the values that ChatGPT generated for us. So these are the values here. So I've asked it to generate the uh, cross product with the two vectors, 213 minus 140. And the answer should be minus 12 minus 3, 9. So let's get on what we will have a look here. And at this point here, the, ve the last three here are minus 12, minus 3 and 9. So I've checked and this is the 2's complement for minus 12, that's the 2's complement for minus 3 and that is the value of 9. And you can see here our original vectors here are this one, this one and this one and then there's the other 3 here. So that's worked and it's given us the right cross product. We're almost finished with vectors. We only have maybe another couple that we need to do to cover uh, everything that we really need for a nice little vector library. And as soon as we're finished that, we'll get straight on to the matrices. So thank you for listening. I'll get you on the next video. Goodbye.